Testing, testing. One, two, one, two. Mic, mic check, everything good? Okay, good, excellent. Uh, and we, sh we shut that off, it still made noise, right? Last time, this thing buzzing, Garrett? The office is downstairs? Yeah, this is the computer. Okay, five seconds. Hey, yes, yes, there we go. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Glad you're with us today. What we're going to talk about today, this is a kind of a fun show, is foods that fill you up but won't fill you out. Foods that you could eat that won't make you fat is pretty much what it is. And this is a big topic because everybody wants to know what this is. Now, if you're new to the show, the way this works is I will talk for 24 minutes. You, whatever platform you're on, uh, can type in any health questions you might have. This is a great opportunity to have some health questions answered. If you're watching it live, put in hashtag live. If you're watching it uh, recorded, put in hashtag replay, if you would do, do that for me. And if you're watching on a replay and you have questions, send me questions through the website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. But right now we're live, and I can take your questions live. So two 24-minute segments with break between each one. You guys ready? Yes? Yep. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad you're with us today. Fun show today. We're going to talk about foods that fill you up. That won't make you fat, or won't fill you out, I should say. If you eat enough of anything, it's going to make you fat, I guess, except water. But this is a big question, because people always say, what can I eat, Dr. Joe? And I tell you, you eat fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and plant-based diets, and people want specifics. And I want specifics, too. So I'm going to give you specifics. Food specifically that work real well to fill you up without putting on as much weight, and that are actually good for you. Because I remember years ago, uh, I think it's still out even, it was a product called Olestra. Remember that product? It was an oil that they made potato chips with and, and foods, and it wasn't absorbed in your body. So you could eat a lot of it, eat a lot of these potato chips I ate. It wasn't absorbed, but it gave you anal leakage and loose stools, and you also then weren't absorbing nutrients because anything that was fat-soluble, like vitamin A, D, E, and K, passed right through you, and it was really dangerous. And so what we're going to talk about today are healthy foods that fill you up without filling you out. All right, first one, start with breakfast. How about oatmeal? Now, oatmeal you always think about as a, a morning or a breakfast food, but you can really have it all day. Part of the reason is that it's so much fiber. And when you put fiber in your body and then drink water with it, that's the key, the fiber is going to swell up, fill up your colon, makes you feel full. And it fills you up and lets your body absorb the nutrients more slowly. So it slowly pushes the food through your colon and you get a slow release of nutrients and sugar. Because one of the things I get, one of the number one questions I get literally every day on my website, drjoe.com, is I have diabetes. I have diabetes. How do I control blood sugar? What can I do for food cravings? And the key is stabilizing your blood sugar. And oatmeal is a great way to do that. Uh, that keeps your energy sta steady throughout the day so you don't have the highs and the lows. Like if I eat a donut, let's say, I'm going to get a high and then I'm going to crash. And then I want to eat more sugar. The oatmeal gives you a slow release of energy. Uh, it may even help uh, that you eat fewer, fewer calories throughout the day because hopefully you're going to feel full. 
Now, don't sweeten your oatmeal with sugar and maple syrup and honey and high fructose corn syrup and pancake syrup because it kind of negates the purpose. So what you can do is use something like dried fruit. You could use raisins. Make sure they're organic because if they're not organic, they may have sulfites in it, and sulfites can be dangerous and carcinogenic and can cause headaches actually too. So any dried fruit you want, pineapple, papaya, um, dried cherries, dried blueberries, raisins, as long as they're organic without sulfites. If that's sulfites with dried fruit, don't eat it. Um, the other thing that's going to be good is, like I said, you want to drink a lot of water. It's going to help swell up in your colon, and that's going to help you feel good as well. So oatmeal is a great meal, great, great uh, snack any time of the day. And one of the things you can do is if you have trouble controlling yourself at the dinner table is have a little bowl of oatmeal before a meal. Now wait 20 minutes. I'm going to give you that tip a little later too. And it'll fill up, swell up in your colon, and then you won't eat as much food. And you make better choices too. Uh, pro tip, if you want to add cinnamon to your oatmeal, better still. Because cinnamon helps stabilize your blood sugar. And this way you don't get those cravings either. I'm going to talk about that in a second too. Uh, soups. Soups are great. I love soups. Um, Fills you up. Doesn't add a whole lot of calories. Usually made with a lot of water. Be sure it's broth-based, like a vegetable broth, of course. I don't want you using chicken broth or beef broth. And what you can do is split peas, lentils, uh, bean soups. I have a, uh, a pressure cooker. What's it called? A one pot. And in the winter, I'll throw in, it takes literally 12 minutes to prepare. Onions, carrots, celery, vegetable broth, and split peas or whatever it is I'm cooking. Put it in one pot. It cooks for 30 minutes. It takes about 30 minutes to heat up, actually. So it takes about an hour. Um, I take it out on my back porch. I release the steam valve. I don't want all the steam released in the house because then it smells like soup. And it's great. It's quick. It's easy. You could eat it cold. You could eat it hot. You could freeze it. Uh, you can give it to people. Extremely affordable. Oh, my gosh. It's like pennies a bowl. And uh, that's a great way to fill up. And it's loaded with fiber and vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And uh, people say, what about your protein? Well, it's a great source of protein. But once again, I only have to answer this question about five times a day. You don't need more protein if you're eating a good diet. In fact, if you're eating a bad diet, you probably don't need more protein either. Protein, very few people have something called kwashiorkor, which is a protein deficiency in our society. There are societies where there, you know, there's not a lot of food. They may have it. But in our society, I've yet to see someone in my career of seeing patients now for 40 years that ever had a protein deficiency unless they were bulimic or anorexic. They threw up. Or bulimic, they threw up. Um, if they had uh, diarrhea or some type of condition where they weren't absorbing nutrients. But other than that, you're going to get plenty of protein. Your body only needs about 8 to 10% of its total caloric intake as protein. Most people get way more than that. I, as a plant-based eater, I probably get double to triple the amount of protein I need. And I'm not doing anything special. I'm not going out of my way to eat more protein. So don't buy into that whole protein lie. If I have time today, I'll cover the fact that plant proteins are so much better for you than animal proteins. Animal proteins, you run the risk of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, plant proteins, that doesn't exist. So that's just another fun fact for you. So soups are a great way to fill up. What we're talking today about how to fill up without filling out. What can I eat so I feel full and I can help lose weight? Salad, of course, is wonderful. Part of the secret to filling up without filling out is eating fewer calories per bite. And it's hard to beat really salad or any vegetables when it comes to that. Now, along with fiber, it's also loaded with vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And if you have your salad as an entree, uh, I do that probably once a day. I have a salad as my main course. Now, if you want to fill up with it, you could add some olives to it. Olives have fat in it, good, better fats than the vegetable oils. So that would help. Um, you could add a handful of nuts, like sliced almonds or walnuts or pecans, uh, pistachios. That'll help, too. You can add beans to it. You could add white beans, cannellini beans, red beans if you'd like to. That'll make you fill up, too. Chickpeas work real well in salads. So the other benefit of salad is you're probably going to use a little vinegar in a dressing. And one of my secrets to weight loss is having vinegar every day. Vinegar helps stabilize your blood sugar so you don't get those crazy crashes that rises in the fall. So cinnamon and vinegar are two things you could add to your food on a regular basis. Have it in your, in your kitchen. Use it. Stabilize your blood sugar. It's wonderful. It's great for diabetics. It's great for us who don't want to eat too much. So having a little vinegar. My favorite vinegar is raw organic apple cider vinegar. Uh, you could use other vinegars, too. Acetic acid is the thing that stabilizes the blood sugar. But apple cider vinegar has more nutrients in it, and it's also slightly alkaline. 
most of us are very acidic because of our diet and our stressful lifestyle. You want to alkalize the system, make it less acid. And apple cider vinegar does that. Regular vinegar doesn't. So like if you're looking at a balsamic or a red wine vinegar, that stays acidic. The apple cider vinegar actually becomes alkaline. So make that part of your diet. And uh, another bonus to circle back, if you add the vinegar, apple cider vinegar, to your soups, it helps you digest the beans or the split peas better with a lot less gas. Now, my German grandmother, I ate a lot of soups when I was young. And, uh, you know, she came over to the United States in 1922. So they were very poor. They lived through the Depression. They lived through Hitler. And she would make a lot of soups because they were cheap and easy. And she would add apple cider vinegar to it, especially to split pea soup. She'd put ham in it. I don't make ham in mine, of course. And I asked her one time why. And she says, I don't know. We just always did. My family, my people, she'd say, my people would always add the vinegar. So years later, as I became, you know, expert in the field here, turns out that she was right. She knew how to do it. She just didn't know why to do it. She knew how to do it, add it to the soup. She didn't know why. Well, it turns out it helps a uh, digestive system uh, break down the, the sugars, the raffinose, um, that, the, the sugars that are in the beans uh, that help you, that cause a lot of gas and help you absorb the nutrients better. So apple cider vinegar, put it in your salads, put it in your soup, stabilizes blood sugar. Wow. It's like a miracle. Yeah, it kind of is. Other things. We're talking today about foods that fill you up but don't fill you out. Another thing you can do is nuts. Now, they're very high in fat, which gives you a lot of calories per bite. I just said you want to eat less calories per bite. Not necessarily. The fat and the protein nuts pro uh, prompt the body to give off hormones that help you feel full. And my secret to eating nuts is you want to eat two handfuls maximum and you're done. Because I love pistachios and cashews. I love all types of nuts. Uh, don't eat peanuts, by the way. Peanuts aren't really nuts. They're legumes. They're high in omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids, I did a show on that a couple weeks ago, cause a lot of inflammation. So stay away from the peanuts. But the walnuts, almonds, pecans, pistachios. Pistachios are high in melatonin. Melatonin helps feed your mitochondria and your cells as well as help you sleep. I mean, there's so many different benefits to it. But I two handfuls, not massive handfuls, little handfuls. Eat two, stop. Give yourself 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, you'll start to feel full. And I know it's hard because you're hungry. I want to eat now. I'm, I, I want pleasure now. I don't want to put it off. I get it. Give yourself 20 minutes. You'll be amazed how much better you feel and how much less food you'll eat. So nuts are great. Nuts are unsaturated, um, not polyunsaturated. I did a show on polyunsaturated fats the other day too. So that's a good kind of oil, and that can help stabilize your blood sugar levels and your cholesterol. Once again, a small handful is an ounce. An ounce, maybe two ounces, depending how big you are, and then stop. Because I know if I eat too many nuts, I can put on weight. And another thing with peanuts, while well, I circle back again, another thing with peanuts is they're high in something called arginine. Now, arginine helps the body produce nitric oxide. Now, you've heard me talk about nitric oxide, how important nitric oxide is. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels, increases circulation, decreases blood pressure, helps get circulation to your brain, your sex organs, your heart, your lungs, your liver, your spleen. Wait a minute, why wouldn't I want to do arginine? Because arginine can also stimulate herpes viruses. Now, there's over 100 different types of herpes viruses. I'm going to guess that all of us have some type of herpes virus in us. It could be oral herpes, could be genital herpes, could be shingles, and there's other types of herpes viruses as well. And arginine can cause outbreaks. And that's why many times uh, right around spring, patients will come to my office and say, Dr. Joe, I'm having these herpes outbreaks, whether it's oral, genital, shingles, whatever. And I'll say, well, what are you doing differently? Nothing. Spring's here. I get out. I'm getting sunlight. I'm going to the Braves games. I live in Atlanta. You know, to go to the Braves games. And when you go to a sporting event, you might do something you don't usually do, which would be eat peanuts. Circus. Eat peanuts. It may not be something you do on a regular basis, but you do it, and that's when you see the outbreaks. So just be careful uh, with peanuts. But the other nuts, small amounts. Wait 20 minutes. You're going to feel full. Same rules apply for avocados. Now, they're full of fat, and people who eat them in moderation actually have less body fat. Now, in moderation, once again, I could eat a couple of handfuls of nuts and put on weight. Avocados, I can eat a half an avocado if I'm really hungry, a whole avocado, and then I'm done for the day. If I eat more than that, I start to put on weight. And part of the reason that people eat avocados are probably also more likely to eat other vegetables, too. A third of a medium avocado is about 106 calories. 
Um, so if you eat a whole one, it's about 300 calories. I'll eat an avocado for a meal because I know how full I'm going to feel. I know how satisfying it is. So I'll take an avocado, I'll sprinkle a little air-dried sea salt on it, maybe put some salsa on it, or just eat it plain. And one avocado, that's my meal. It's a breakfast, lunch, or a dinner. So again, total is about 300 calories for medium avocado, but I'm going to feel full from it. If I eat 300 calories of other food, I'm probably not going to feel that full. So we're talking today about foods that fill you up, but don't fill you out. And avocados is one of those great things. Now, how do you know an avocado is ripe? And there's always jokes. If you ever see the memes on social media, the avocado is not ripe, not ripe, not ripe. You leave the room, you go, you know, sneeze, come back in, and the avocado is rotten already. It ripens in a very short window. So what you want to do is when you push on the avocado, it should feel like the tip of your nose. Just enough give, just a little bit of give, that's when you know it's perfect. It can go a little bit more, so it could feel like the tip of your nose. Then you're good. As soon as it gets soft, put it in the refrigerator. It slows down the ripening process. Now, the cool thing about avocados is that they freeze really well. So you come across a sale on avocados. I can't eat a case of avocados. What am I going to do? Wait till they're right, ready. Slice them around. Take the pit out. Take the, the meat or the, you know, the soft part out and chop it in cubes. Put a little bit of olive oil on it and a little bit of lemon juice and then just put it in the, fr- in the freezer. So you, if you want to leave the olive oil out, you actually can. The lemon juice the key. And then leave it, it flat you know, in chunks. Put it in the freezer. It'll, it'll freeze as cubes. So when you feel like an avocado, you just want a little bit for guacamole or you want to put it on a sandwich or you want to you know, have some beans. You want to have some guacamole with it. Take out a few cubes. They defrost really fast, and it's so convenient. It saves you a ton of money, too. So, folks, you're just tuning in. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about foods that fill you up but won't make you fat as long as you eat them the right way. Now, one of the things I find is when I'm hungry and I just can't get full and I know I've eaten enough food, what I've discovered is my stomach is pushed up against my diaphragm. So along with the fact that I'm just not feeling full, I'll burp. I'll have bad breath. I'll feel bloated. And in many cases, the, the stomach needs to be massaged or pulled down away from the diaphragm. So the stomach is up against the diaphragm. We need to massage and pull it down away from the diaphragm. And all my doctors are trained to do this technique. Some of them knew it already before they worked with me. Some of them I trained. And the reason it's so important is I have this condition. When my stomach pushes up against my diaphragm, again, I feel full. I'm burping, bad breath. I, I, I don't feel full. And I got to get my stomach adjusted. And as soon as I do, usually within minutes, stomach flattens out. I feel better. So if you have heartburn, acid reflux, burping, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, let's see if we can get to the cause of the problem and not just treat the symptoms. Because we can give you medication. We can give you antacids. And those all work great to cover up the symptoms, but doesn't fix the problem. So if you have a digestive issue, why not come see us? And let's see if we can physically fix it, not chemically fix it. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches, blurred vision, uh, uh, neuropathy in your feet, burning in your feet, those are almost always due to pinched nerves, uh, and nutrition actually flares it up and makes it worse. So if you have a health issue, come see us. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love to be your doctors. So we would get to we would check the nervous system, check the digestive system, do a dietary workup on you, and let's give you the advice that we think would be the best protocol for your specific needs. And if it's not something we think we can treat, we'll tell you that too. You know what? This isn't within our wheelhouse, but why don't I refer you to this doctor, this therapist, this uh, whatever we need to try to get to the cause of your problem. We have a whole network we work with, and we'd love to have you uh, become part of getting well and staying well. And we do it without drugs and surgery. If you need drugs and surgery, we have that available too. But we try to do it without drugs and surgery. So if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, go to my website, drjoe.com. You can book it right online. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love the opportunity to work with you. So drjoe.com, set it up right now. Normally, the first visit is $940. We've reduced that to $299 for our listeners. So there's no reason why you shouldn't do this. And we accept all insurances. It depends what your insurance covers, but we accept you. Uh, cash plans available. A lot of people are cash because they're, they don't even have insurance at $6,000 deductibles. That's ridiculous. So uh, come see us, drjoe.com, and we'd love to get that set up for you right away. What we're talking about today, foods that fill you up but won't make you fat. Now, again, if you eat too many of anything, you're going to get fat, of course. 
but there's a lot of foods that you can start adding to your diet. And the funny part about this is all the foods we're talking about are good for you. Oh, my gosh. So I wouldn't tell you to go out and eat cottage cheese, let's say. That might fill you up because it's high in fat, but I'm not a fan of dairy products for many, many, many reasons. Uh, I had a patient the other day come in, and she was the patient. Her son was with him. He's 12 years old. And she was telling me a story how he stopped breathing, had an allergic reaction, and a neighbor boy came by, and he knew CPR, and the kid was only nine years old, and they saved his life, and they were on a Dr. Oz show, and on and on and on and on. But she said, if you look at him, and he's got eczema on his arms, his legs, and she said, we realize when he doesn't eat sugar and he eats a lot of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, his eczema goes away. And then when he starts eating bad again, the eczema comes back. What do you think that is? Well, it's eating the bad foods. It's pretty clear. So I challenged him, and I said, uh, you up for a challenge? Man, I'm man. He goes, yeah. I said, all right, no dairy and no wheat for 60 days, 30 days, I said. And let's see if it gets better. If it doesn't get better, so what? And he said, okay, I'll do it. So here a kid was 12 years old, ready to do it, nine years old, I think, actually, ready to make these changes because he wants to get rid of his eczema. What do you want to get rid of? Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, digestive issues, weight, brain fog, fatigue, aging. Of course, we can't stop all of this stuff, but we can stop a lot of it by getting the nervous system, digestive system, and diet straightened out. So ask, you that question, ask yourself a question, what health issues would I want to get rid of? And if this is something we can help, come see us, and we'll put together a protocol specifically for you. We'd love to be your doctors, drjoe.com. Other foods that fill you up but won't make you fat. Beans. People who eat them are more satisfied between meals. Over the long term, they, tr- they usually translate into less body fat and healthier weight. Now, it makes sense. They're light in calories, packed with fiber, very filling. Now, the problem with beans is that we add cheese to them and rice. And fry tortilla chips, if you're doing Mexican food, that's what you're putting the weight on. So if I go to a Mexican restaurant, I usually get a side order of beans, assuming they have no lard in them. I'll get a side order of guacamole, and I'll get some salsa, and I'll kind of layer it, and I'll just eat it with a fork or a spoon. And at the end of the meal, I'm full. My mouth's watering thinking about it. I'm full. The other people that might have had the chicken cheese enchiladas with the fried uh, tortilla shells and then the chips and salsa before that, a margarita, at the end of the meal, they're also full. But I actually ate foods that are good for me, and they ate foods that were bad for them. My bill is usually about a half or less of what everybody else's is. It's usually less, actually. So you save money. You feel full. The food is great. You get to go out and socialize. There's no downside to eating well. There's no downside to getting healthy. You know, people talk about, well, Dr. Joe, what can I, what's the first step I should do to help? We're going to talk about this in a second, but I want to cover it right now. Is when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food, you're hungry for nutrition. And so you want to give your body concentrated nutrition. All the foods we talked about so far are high in nutrition. I personally take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source every day. It's the first thing I do in the morning. One of the reasons I take it is because it's the minimum supplement you should take every day. The other reason is, it makes me feel full because, again, it's super high concentrated nutrients, and so it really helps curb my appetite. If I don't take it, I, I'm starving, and I want to have a big breakfast. If I take it, I have a small breakfast. I have some fruit, and then usually around 10 o'clock, I'll have a handful of nuts, maybe two, and then I'm ready for lunch, which is oftentimes salad. And so I eat so much less food when I start my day with high concentration of nutrients, and that's why I'm recommending the fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, the oatmeal, the avocados, uh, because that's going to help you feel full not just because of the fiber, but because of the nutrients in it. Super Green is an essential source. My opinion, the minimum supplements everybody should be taking every day. If you're not taking at least that, at least that, I have to question what your goals are to get well. So drjoe.com, we ship it the next business day, sometimes the same business day. Or you can come by our offices and save some shipping. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. No reason you shouldn't be taking at least Super Green is an essential source. I prefer a lot more. Omega-3 fatty acid, nitric oxide. Uh, I take glutathione for my liver, slow down the aging process. But again, I'll start out with the basics. And if you want more information, you can always send me questions through my website, drjoe.com. But beans are great. They're very inexpensive. Uh, You can buy them dry. And like I said, if you've got a a one pot or a pressure cooker, they cook up in a half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, You could add seasonings to them if you want. You can mash them up. Whatever floats your boat, it's great. You make soups out of them. Another to say superfood. That's so trite, that word. Um, 
is quinoa. Q-U-I-N-O-A. Now, I remember when it first came out, I talked about it on my shows, and nobody knew what it was. And now, all the cool restaurants have quinoa. They have quinoa salads. They have quinoa bowls. They have quinoa as a side dish, as an appetizer. So quinoa, very high in fiber, very high in protein, which means it's going to fill you up real quickly. Um, all told, it can probably keep you feeling uh, fuller a lot longer than rice. Because what happens is, when you eat rice... It breaks down into a sugar. It's absorbed quickly. The body releases insulin. Insulin take, opens up the cells, allows the sugar in. Your blood sugar crashes, and you get hungry again. Quinoa can you, be used like a rice. It's a little grain type thing. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. It has good mouthfeel to it. has a little chew to it, unlike rice, which is kind of really mushy. So I think quinoa should be part of your diet. It's so easy to cook. You know, two parts of water, one part quinoa. Boil it. You know, get it, bring it to a boil. Cover it. It'll, it'll cook up real quick like rice. Uh, and you can do it for so many different things. So, I right, folks, I'm almost out of time for this segment. But if you have any healthcare questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. A lot more to cover. Uh, follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito. We are blowing up on social media. We post every single day. We post serious stuff. We post funny stuff. Dr. Joe, uh, at Dr. Joe Esposito, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Thread, um, at Dr. Joe Esposito, just follow us. You're going to get so much information. Of course, absolutely no charge. Follow us on social media. If you're a podcast junkie, type in your podcast service, whatever it is, Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. And we have, gosh, hundreds of hours of podcasts. We post at least twice a week on podcasts. So you have my website, drjoe.com. Your social media, uh, at Dr. Joe Esposito, uh, your podcast services. We want to do everything we can to get you well and keep you well. Again, the website, drjoe.com. Bam. Questions? Is balsamic vinegar good for salads? Balsamic is good, but with vinegars, you got to realize that if it says of Moderna, M-O-D-E-R-N-A, that means that it's processed with chemicals and it's really not pure. If it doesn't say uh, of Moderna, that means it's a pure balsamic. It's going to be a little more expensive too. Um, yeah, but it's great. Apple cider is better, but balsamic is okay. Okay? What else? Is cinnamon a good sweetener for oatmeal? Yes. Yes, absolutely. We talked about that earlier. Cinnamon stabilizes blood sugar. In fact, I take cinnamon and mix it with my super greens and essential source every day. And that's a little bonus that I do. And I also add ginger to it. Now, ginger changes the flavor a lot, so you may not like that. But I add powdered ginger to it. And ginger helps metabolism and energy. So you can take super greens and essential source as, a, as an ingredient in recipes as well. But I, I love gin. I love cinnamon. I add it to my super greens every day. So, what else? That's it. Cool. All right. All right, folks. We're gonna do part two now. If you have any questions, uh, send them through to us through your social media, and I'll I'll cover it right after we do this twenty-four minute segment. Ready? Hey, folks. Dr. Joe Esposito. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you spending time with me today. What we're talking about today, kind of fun, are foods that fill you up, but don't fill you out make you fat. Now, we talked about a lot of good things. We talked about beans. We talked about oatmeal. We talked about avocados, fruits and vegetables, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Central Source. And so when people say, I don't know what to eat, doc. I want to lose weight. This is the show for you. It's very simple and easy. Now, before I go into some more foods and then foods that you shouldn't eat, I want to give you some of the tricks that I use to stabilize my blood sugar. And I covered a few of them earlier, but I know people tune in and out all the time. So, and I'll go over it again. You need to hear things any, uh, multiple times anyway. Vinegar is amazing for stabilizing your blood sugar. When you eat vinegar with your food, it stabilizes the blood sugar, and you don't get those crashes, so you get hungry, you get those cravings. So vinegar is awesome. So a couple of things you can do with vinegar. Number one is I use it on salads. I don't like the flavor of vinegar, to be honest with you, because I don't like tart. I like sweet things. Some people love, like lemons. Ah, just thinking about it, it hurts my mouth. But some people suck on lemons, which I think is weird. But they do. Lemons, limes, uh, I don't mind oranges, but I don't like tart so much. So vinegar is not one of my favorite foods, so I incorporate it into my diet. So I have a salad just about every day, and I take a little glass jar, a little uh, um, uh, canning jar, and I'll put in uh, vinegar, oil, and water, equal parts of vinegar, oil, and water. And then I'll add uh, maybe garlic powder or fresh garlic. I'll add pepper. I'll add a little bit of air-dried sea salt to it. I could add oregano to it if I want to make Italian flair. I could add ginger to it if I want to add ginger flair. 
uh, sesame oil if I want to make an Asian flair. And then I just shake it up and I pour it on my salad when I, when I come to work in the morning. And, you know, right around my lunchtime, I sit down and have my delicious salad. I'll add olives to it because olives are a little fat, fatty and that'll help me feel full. If I want to get crazy, I'll add some avocado to it, which makes you feel full. I'll add some nuts to it if I want to feel full. But you really want to try to incorporate vinegar into your diet as often as you can, uh, at least once a day. And if you do a little bit of vinegar and water, let's assume you do a tablespoon of vinegar with a glass of water before your meal, two things happen. Number one is the water helps you feel full because many times you're not hungry, you're thirsty. And number two, the vinegar will stabilize your blood sugar. So if you make it a ritual to have a, you know, a teaspoon or a tablespoon of vinegar with a glass of water before every meal, you're going to eat a whole lot less food. It's a real easy, quick, simple weight loss hack. The other thing we said, cinnamon. Cinnamon really stabilizes blood sugar. And I, th I believe that all doctors should be telling diabetics that they should take vinegar every day, cinnamon every day. And I'm going to talk about something called gymnema in just a second. And if you have blood sugar issues and you take vinegar, cinnamon, and, and gymnema, you're taking a major positive step to stabilizing that blood sugar. And it's really cheap. And I wish all doctors would tell their patients that because it's so easy and so quick. And it's tasty, too. Uh, I said gymnema. Gymnema is a supplement, and we can get it for you. If you send me an email, I can get it for you. But gymnema stabilizes your blood sugar as well. And I think everybody that has diabetes, the doctor should give them a bottle of gymnema as they walk out the door to stabilize their blood sugar and tell them to use cinnamon and vinegar at home. So those are three things you can use to help cut your cravings and also keep you energized throughout the day. And you're going to eat, make, first of all, you're going to make much better choices. If you're going out for dinner, you're going out for dessert, going out for drinks, going on a date, going out for desserts, just for, you know, a dessert date. Have yourself a little vinegar and water. Maybe throw some cinnamon in there too before you leave. Wow. You're going to make so many better choices. Now, I don't know if you're human, but I am. And I know that I'm tempted. Now, I don't eat any animal products. I've been vegan now for 38 years. And so if it has animal products in it, I just don't eat it. Even if I'm tempted, I just don't eat it. But when you learn to take control of your cravings, you now have control of your life. And it's amazing how much better you'll feel just by these little things. So vinegar, cinnamon, gymnema, crazy how your life is going to change. And how you're gonna get you're gonna make better choices on your food, which will make better choices in everything in your life, your career, your love life, your family, your friends, your church, your job, whatever it is, you'll make better choices because stabilizing blood sugar allows the brain to function more efficiently. Boy, that's a million dollar tip I just gave you right there. All right, other foods that can make you feel full. Popcorn. Skip the chips and the candy, go to the popcorn. It's a satisfying mix of fiber, it's low in calories, as long as you don't load it up with what? Butter and oils, right? It's part of the reason that uh, maybe that the air puffs up when it pops. Uh, the, the air puffs it up when it pops. And it takes, about, takes up more room in your belly. It makes you feel fuller. Now, here's the tricks for olive oil, uh, for popcorn. What you can do is get an air popper. You might run you 10 bucks somewhere. I don't even know. You probably get them at a Goodwill somewhere too. Get an air popper, pop your popcorn. Get a little tiny spray bottle and put some tamari in your spray bottle. Now, tamari is a high-end soy sauce. doesn't have monosodium glutamate in it. And spray it on. So now you're getting something moist, and you're getting some salt on there as well. Then you could sprinkle it with something like nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is loaded with B vitamins and proteins, has a really nice uh, savory flavor to it. If you're sensitive to monosodium glutamate, like I am, Nutritional yeast, is a, it's a, it, it's, it frees up glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is the thing that uh, stimulates the umami taste buds on your tongue. It makes you feel savor, savory and, and satisfied. So if you have get, notice if you feel bad after eating it, like you get a headache, you might want to not use the nutritional yeast. Most people, major, major majority, are going to do great with nutritional yeast. And it has such a cheesy, nutty flavor. I don't know what else to call it. Savory. Uh, you can add some pepper to it if you wanted to. You could add some ginger if you want to do an Asian flair popcorn. You could do it that way. Uh, and it's a great snack. It's easy. It's quick. My only caveat is this. I want to make sure you do organic popcorn only. If it's not organic, chances are it's been genetically modified. That's a whole nother lecture. But organic popcorn only. Every grocery store carries it. It's not like you have to dig far to find it. But it's a fun little snack. Makes you feel full. Drink some water with it. Throw some vinegar in that water. 
and you're going to feel full and stabilize the blood sugar. You'll be amazed how good you feel after doing that. Uh, now, you can put dill, by the way. I like actually dill on my popcorn. I love the flavor of dill. Dill with a little bit of air-dried, sea, uh, with a little bit of tamari on it. Um, pretty amazing. You can get a mustard powder. You get a little crazy there. All right, so there's several foods that you can eat every day that make you feel full. But highly processed foods like sodas, candy, white bread, very little nutrition. They dump too much sugar into the blood at once. Sugar goes into the blood. The body releases insulin. Insulin goes to the cells, locks like a key, opens up the cell, allows sugar in. You keep producing a lot of insulin because you're eating a lot of sugar. The cells become insulin resistant. So what that means is the cells, the, 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 again, insulin is like a key, opens up the cell, lets the sugar in. Over time, the cell says, wait a minute. I can't take any more sugar because it's going to gunk up my works. So the cells then tell the, the, the uh, insulin, no, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to resist you. I'm not going to let you open me up. And that can lead to insulin resistance. The other thing that leads to insulin resistance, or also known as type 2 diabetes, is animal fats. Saturated fats can clog up the receptor site so the insulin can't open the cell and it can't get it in there. So cutting out the saturated fats for many reasons is a great idea. Cutting out uh, the sugar, of course, is a great idea. And that's going to help keep that st- blood sugar stable. So not only are we giving you a lecture today on foods that fill you up, but hopefully won't make you gain weight, we're also giving you a lecture on how to stabilize blood sugar, which is brain function, sleep, sexual function, uh, reducing risk of diabetes, heart disease, cancer. There's no downside to doing what I'm telling you today, folks. Absolutely none, because everything I'm telling you tastes great too. So no downside at all on this one. So if you have too much sugar, let's assume the sugar isn't getting used. You're insulin resistant. The sugar builds up in the blood. The body has to do something with the sugar. The body sends it to the liver and converts it into something called glycogen. Glycogen is stored energy, and it's stored in your cells, in your liver, uh, in your muscles, and it's utilized when you run out of blood sugar. The cells run out of blood sugar. They say, hey, I want some more sugar. Where do I go? Oh, you know what? We got this reserve tank of glycogen. Once you use up all your glycogen stores, the body then takes that sugar, converts it into triglycerides, and then stores it as fat. So this is why keeping that blood sugar stable and utilizing sugar properly is so important. Triglycerides turn into fat, and that's where the problem comes in. So if you're eating a lot of these foods, it's going to make you hungry again. The the sugars, the processed foods. Uh, fiber food is going to be the key. Whole grains, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. Satisfies your hunger. Steady stream of energy. We have answers. I'm going to go off on a tangent here. We have so many answers in healthcare. Diabetes, heart disease. We know that heart disease is now in many cases reversible. Oh, we got a little feedback there. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Um, Where's it coming from? The air conditioner? Oh, the air conditioner's whistling. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry, I'm, I'm here to speak. I thought it was feedback from, from, the, from, the, from the, 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 the thing. Uh, can we shut that off, maybe? Or is it, oh, it's calming down. Okay, good. All right, so back to where we were. We have the answers. We have so many answers in healthcare. We know that with heart, uh, heart disease, for example, heart disease is many cases reversible. Okay, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Sinatra, Dr. Esselstyn, these medical doctors have done research and proven that if you go to a plant-based diet, in many cases, you can reduce the risk and reverse heart disease. Not always, but many times. Same thing with diabetes. Same thing with pain management. Chiropractic, most effective, least expensive treatment for, for pain. Why wouldn't you go to a chiropractor if you have back pain? It's the most effective, least expensive treatment. Plant-based diet, most effective, least expensive treatment for diabetes and heart disease. We have answers in healthcare, but for some reason, people are not listening. Doctors aren't getting it. And so it's a really easy process when you have the answers. So if you guys want to become a patient in our offices, I would love the opportunity for me and my doctors to be your doctors. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, digestive issues, nutritional concerns, uh, weight issues, come see us. DrJoe.com is the website. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Uh, it's very easy to make an appointment with us. Normally, the first visit is $940. We've reduced that to $299 for my listeners. Exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and you follow a visit, and a complete nutrition evaluation. Where else are you going to get that kind of evaluation? I don't know of anywhere else. It may exist, but I'm not aware of it. So drjoe.com, for you, your friends, your family, stop suffering needlessly. 
We want to get to the cause of your health care problems, not just treat the symptoms. We accept people with all insurances. Now, doesn't mean your insurance is going to cover. We accept you. If it doesn't cover, we have plans available, payment plans. Many of them is interest-free. It's extremely affordable regardless. DrJoe.com, make your appointment now to come see us. There's such a disconnect between the science and healthcare, and I cannot for the life of me understand why there's a disconnect. The science has been done. We don't have to do more research. Well, yes, we should, but we don't have to in many cases because the research has shown this is the best protocol for this treatment. And yet, for some reason, it's not being instituted mainstream. And it's also not a lot of money in that either, by the way. It's big money in diseases, not a lot of big money in health. So maybe I'm being cynical, but there seems to be a little link there. So, But drjoe.com, book your appointments now. Stop suffering. Oh, by the way, if you're ever in a car accident, if the car is damaged, you're damaged. I've never seen it any other way. So if you're in an accident, come see us immediately. And I'm going to get a soapbox again. There are so many scammers out there. If you're in an accident, here's a promise I can almost guarantee is going to happen. You're going to get a call sometimes within hours of the accident from somebody saying, you need to go see this doctor, this lawyer. That's a scam. They get your information off the police reports from the internet. They call you, hey, this is Bob from your insurance company, which is listed, by the way, on your police report. And you need to go see Dr. Garrett and attorney John. That's a scam. Don't ever fall for that. Your insurance company is never going to call you. No one is ever going to call you and tell you to go see a doctor or a lawyer. If you are, you're part of a scam. Now, I don't know if there's a, a sting. That go, I know there's a big sting un, underway right now. So if you're doing that right now, you're probably going to get caught, by the way. Um, but I don't know if you're involved. You're probably innocent. But I don't even want you being involved in that. But more importantly, you're not going to get the care that you need. I've never seen the scammers ever give the care that's necessary, ever. So drjoe.com. Come to us, find you an honest doctor. Let's see what we can do, whether it's us or somebody else. Let's try to get to the cause of your problems, not just treat the symptoms. All right, so we're talking today about foods that fill you up that don't fill you out. Processed foods make you hungry. Because again, when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food. You're hungry for nutrition. And you're eating cookies and cakes and donuts and pastas and breads and, al and uh, alcohol and sugar and dairy and meats and sodas. The body says, that's great, very filling, but that's not the nutrition that my body needs to function at 100%. Go out and get me more nutrients. And you do that, the body does that by making you hungry. So cutting out the processed foods, you're going to eat so much less food. You're going to save so much money. You're probably going to live so much longer. Now, you can't eat just popcorn and oatmeal all day, of course. Other foods that you want to eat, uh, if you don't know what to eat, do this. Go to my website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. And all you have to do is type in the search bar the words, so what can I eat? So what can I eat? Listen to a talk that I gave. It was just me in a studio one day. And I talked for about an hour on breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks, uh, what to eat, uh, packing lunches, kids, holidays. I've covered it all. And that's on the website, drjoe.com. Absolutely free. You can search the website, by the way. We have over 4,000 hours of audio and video there. Absolutely free. Just type in what you're looking for. I think you'll be very, very happy with the information we have on the website, drjoe.com. So I won't go into all that. You could just listen to it on your own. So other ingredients that are going to help curb your appetite and have you eat less, sleep. When you sleep better, you're less hungry. I don't know about you, but if I'm tired, I want to have a snack. I want to go to the refrigerator. If I had a good day, I ate well, I did my exercises, I, I've been very prosperous, I had a lot, I got a lot done in the day, I'm not as hungry. And even if I, I, I let's say uh, after, sometimes I do radio shows, I get home from work maybe 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, I'm hungry. But because I had a good day, I say, you know what, now's not the time to eat. Let me go to bed and I'll wake up in the morning and start over again. And you can make so many better decisions when your body is fueled with the proper nutrients. That's why one of the reasons I take super greens and essential source every day. The two powders, I mix them together. In the summer, I throw a half a frozen banana. I got a little bullet, magic bullet. I mix it up and drink it in the morning. I add my cinnamon to it too. And I feel great. In the winter, I don't add the frozen banana because it's cold. I, I, but in the frozen, it's kind of like a smoothie in the summer. And you could add mango if you want to. Frozen berries I add to it. And I like the frozen fruits because I like that rich, thick, smoothie, uh, frozen feeling to it. But, folks, if you're not doing anything else, please at least do Super Greens and Essential Source. 
the two powders. They taste great. Mix them together. We have hemp, hemp plain, and mint super greens. Um, try them all. My favorite is the mint. My second favorite is the hemp. My third favorite is the plain. But I love them. And you'll find that when people start taking them, they're blown away. I also take nitric oxide every day. Nitric oxide opens up my blood vessels and increases circulation. Also gives me a lot of energy. That energy allows me to move around, to do exercises, so that my body is less hungry. If I'm laying around and I'm tired all the time, what do I want to do? I want to eat. Brain's saying, I want some fuel, baby. I want to get rocking. And so it makes you hungry. So you got to learn what, why you're hungry. You're hungry because you're lacking nutrients. You're hungry because you're lacking fiber. You're hungry because you're lacking uh, enough nutrient, uh, protein and fats and carbohydrates for the body to work properly. So when you know why you're hungry, it's a lot easier to fix it. People say, well, Dr. Joe, you seem to know so much about chiropractic care and the body and the organs and the brain. I've been studying this for 40 years. When I first got into it, I didn't know what I know now. I'm going to know more in another 40 years. So the more you practice this lifestyle, the easier it is, the better it gets. And if you go to the website, drjoe.com, we have over 4,000 hours of audio and video there. You can learn a lot more. It's a great binge. People binge our shows all day, every day. I see it on the website. Uh, if you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service, Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. We post uh, two podcasts a week minimum, sometimes more. Um, if you're a social media junkie, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Thread, uh, we post every single day. We post health tips, one-minute health tips. And so that's a quick way to get your Dr. Joe fix. Make sure you follow us on all those social media platforms, and you'll get little health tips. Every day I get emails, every day, no kidding, middle of the night sometimes, and people saying, thank you. This is amazing. I love getting this in little bits and pieces like this. I like your long, for long, long format shows. I like your short format shows. Everything you I try to get as much information as I can to you so that I teach you the best you can. Some people like short, some people like long, whatever works for you. But you got to be smart enough to absorb the information, and that's where Super Green Central Source Nitric Oxide comes into play. Uh, I take digestive enzymes every time I eat a cooked meal. At my age, I don't have the digestive enzymes I used to. Digestive enzymes help break down my food, absorb my nutrients. I take a B-complex every single day. Everyone should take a B-complex every day, even if you're eating a good diet, bad diet, meat eater, plant-based, B-complex is really necessary, I feel. Uh, I take omega-3 fatty acids for brain function. We did a whole show on that not long ago. So we have the answers to a lot of your health problems. I can't fix everything. And some people are beyond fixable at this point in our technology. But let's try to do everything we can to get the best results possible. That's my goal. And so if you want to become a patient, drjoe.com. Now, we can do telehealth as well. If you can't come see us in person, we can set up a telehealth. Just call the office. We'll get that set up for you too. So we're talking about foods that fill you up without filling you out. Not getting enough sleep, really important. Go to the website, drjoe.com. Type the word sleep in the search bar. We've done shows on that to teach you uh, how, to, how to sleep. And again, it's not somebody has to teach you. Now, I covered it earlier. I want to cover it real quick in the last few minutes here. Landmark study out of Harvard involving 100,000 men and women found that replacing animal protein with plant protein was associated with lower risk of dying prematurely. I should drop the mic and walk out. Doing animal plant protein instead of animal protein reduces your risk of die, dying overall. Why wouldn't you do that? My God. I get a lot more information here. The worst meats seem to be animal protein, seem to be processed bacon, egg protein. Uh, but swapping even 3% of your plant protein for any animal protein, processed meat, unprocessed meat, chicken, fish, eggs, dairy, whatever it is, associated with significantly lower risk of the most important endpoint of all the things I'll ever teach you. What's the most important endpoint? Death. Reducing the risk of death by simply reducing your animal proteins. Why wouldn't you do that? It's quick. It's easy. It's inexpensive. It tastes good. You're going to try so many different foods you've never tried before. You'll get fiber. Your bowels will work better. Your love life improves. One of the biggest reasons we have problems with sexual function in men and women is clogged arteries. The number one cause of clogged arteries, animal proteins, animal fats, actually. Wow. If that's not motivation enough, increase your love life, help your brain function, live longer, go to the bathroom better, stay skinny, have more energy, be a better mother, father, sister, brother, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever you are. We're all somebody to somebody. Why wouldn't you want to be better? And it's cheaper than anything you're doing right now. And it tastes better than anything you're doing right now. 
So the answers are here, folks. Then you add things like chiropractic care to keep the nervous system working. You, add, you check the digestive system. The stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm. You pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. Sorry about that chirping here, folks. If, you, if my microphone is picking it up, it's here in the studio. The air conditioner is whistling. We have answers to your health care problems. Why wouldn't you do it? Ooh, it's getting a lot louder this time. Again, I apologize for that, folks. Hopefully you can hear me. So the, the researchers adjusted for factors of fat protein, age, a fat content, age, plant protein is generally lower in something called branch chain amino acids. Now, a while ago, this was the big thing. Bodybuilders saying you need more branch chain amino acids to build muscle mass. It turns out the branch chain amino acids are actually dangerous for you. It could, so I want you to stay away from those. Decreasing the consumption of branch chain amino acids improves metabolic health. So we have answers here. The branch chain amino acid sales pitch that was going around was wrong. Eating more protein was wrong. Your body only needs 8 to 10% of its total caloric intake is protein. A steak is 17, 18%. So all that extra protein has to be processed and passed out of the body. And it goes through your liver and your kidneys. And in the process, puts a major strain on your liver and your kidneys. And so we got to stop that. Why would you do things that you know are dangerous to your health? You look at people that smoke, if you don't smoke, and you say, don't they know how bad that is for them? Don't they understand that that's shortening the life expectancy? Well, some of the things you're doing is doing that too. And I'm not picking on you. I'm just giving you information, and it's really easy to do. Again, you want to know what to eat, drjoe.com, so what can I eat? Want to make an appointment to come see us? Let's put together a plan. You don't have to do everything I say. Don't be afraid of me. Some people say, Dr. Joe, I'm afraid you're going to tell me I can't do certain things. No, I'm just going to advise you, and whatever level you want to go to is perfectly fine with me. I want to hold your hand, take baby steps if that's what you need. Or if you want to take a big leap, I'm fine with that too. DrJoe.com. Social media, we post tips every single day. At Dr. Joe Esposito is my handle. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Thread. We post every single day. You're going to get so much information. And your podcast service, Dr. Joe for the Health of is a podcast where we do our podcast. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Catch you next time. Okay. Any questions? Louie's not bleeding through. What's not bleeding through? The audio. It wasn't? Oh, good. Okay. Excellent. All right. Okay, yeah. We'll do a little, little cleanup there. Any questions? What can I do for swollen ankles? Depends on what's causing the swelling. There's two types of swelling in the ankles, pitting and non-pitting edema. Now, if you squ- squeeze your ankle and it pops right back, that's non-pitting edema. That's usually a circulatory issue. Uh, it could be uh, the heart's not pumping as well as it should. It could be a pinched nerve in the low back that's affecting the blood supply to the ankles. If you push on your ankle and it stays there, like Play-Doh, or you know, like you're mixing dough and it sticks in, that's called pitting edema. That's something you want to get checked immediately, today, if you can. Pitting edema could be several things. The worst case scenario is heart failure. So you want to come see us. We can check the nerve supply. We can check the, the circulatory issue. We can get you on some supplements, maybe nitric oxide, super green, essential source. Open up the nerve and blood supply, and hopefully that's going to solve your problem. If it doesn't, we're going to have to co-manage your case with a vascular surgeon or a cardiologist. Don't put that one off. That's a serious one. So come see us and let's do the evaluation. Then we can tell you what to do from there. What else? Is fried rice okay to eat? I would try to stay away from the rice. Uh, I would do fried quinoa, which is way better for you. If you're going to do the same thing as uh, fried rice, just do fried quinoa and see how that works. Rice is okay if you cool it, cook it, cool it overnight, and then cook it the next day again or fry it the next day uh, because it's going to create what's called a resistant starch. You're going to absorb about 40 to 50% less carbohydrates or sugar if you do the resistant starch protocol. Uh, I wouldn't do it as a main course. I wouldn't do it on a regular basis. I'd mix a lot of vegetables with it, add some ginger to it to stabilize blood sugar. That would be okay periodically. Make sure it's organic rice, though, preferably from California. California has the least amount of uh, uh, heavy metals in their rice, like arsenic. So, What else? What type of oatmeal is best? Organic. Now, groats is the best. Groats is the whole oat. Okay, that's the best kind. Um, then you could do steel cut, which is they take the groat and chop it up. That's next best. Old-fashioned rolled out is the next best. I don't recommend you do instant. Instant is basically like eating sugar. 
So Groats, which is pretty uh, impractical. Steel Cut is probably the most practical, best one. Organic. What else? I'm on a fiber diet after surgery to remove adhesions in my bowel. I can't eat fruits, grains, or salads, but I want to eat healthy. What can I eat? Super Greens is an essential source. That's fruits and vegetables in a powder form, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin. So absolutely that has to be a necessary. I would also get you on probiotics. I would get you on digestive enzymes. I would let you, get you on glutathione to help the liver. And I'd say come see us because there's actually adjustments we can do for the colon, the small intestine, large intestine, nerve supply to that area to get them working more efficiently as well. So you want to come see us for that. And let's see what we can do to get the, that colon healthy again. Anything else? How much ice cream a day should you eat? As much as possible. Come on. <laughs> I'm assuming somebody's being a, a, a troll or a stalker or just trying to be cute. So uh, if you're going to eat ice cream, and I'll turn this around on you if you're a troll, um, don't do dairy. You can do coconut. You can do almond. You can do soy. Uh, better yet, just take frozen fruit, add a little coconut milk to it or almond milk or soy milk or hemp milk, and whip it up that way, and then you can make ice cream that way. Add a little touch of vanilla to it if you want. So... Um, what can I do for swollen ankles? Well, we got to check the nerve supply in the low back. Okay. Yeah. You got to open up the, like you just talked about, check the nerve supply in the low back. If it's pitting edema, you push on it and it sticks. That's not good. Uh, you want to come see us immediately and maybe a cardiologist as well, because it could be a uh, heart failure. So swollen ankles, check the nerve supply to the area. Cause again, if you go to a cardiologist, they're going to put you on a blood thinner. Oh, I'm sorry. Water pills to drain the water out, but they don't really get to the cause of the problem. Now, if it's congestive heart failure, again, we may have to uh, co-manage the case. But you definitely want to come see us and let us determine what direction to go in. Let us be the captain of your healthcare ship on that one. What else? Are canned foods like beans and veggies okay? Try to do organic. A lot of times canned foods have something in it called bisphenol A. And bisphenol A prevents the stuff from it's – a, it's a lining in the can to make it slide out more efficiently. Um, so you want to look for cans that say no BPA. Preferably, if you're going to do canned foods, organic only. And that would be a better choice. Any advice for numbness and tingling on the right side of my body? MRI of neck and brain and lumbar done and came back negative. Okay, good. Then it's probably a pinch nerve. I was going to say get an MRI done to see if you had a stroke. Uh, it's probably pinch nerves. And when you pinch a nerve, that can cause numbness, tingling, pain, muscle weakness. So come see us and let's check those nerves and unpinch it. The concern is not just the pain and the numbness. It's also the fact those nerves control organs. And so depending what level of your spine it is, some, one or more organs are controlled by that nerve, and you're affecting the organ health as well. So you want to get that checked right away. That's a warning sign to tell you to come see us. Uh, isn't nitric oxide an amino acid? Maybe. I'm not sure about that. Nitric oxide is something that your body produces in, in the blood vessels. So what would that matter? I don't know if there's a question to go, go in with that. So uh, you can't take nitric oxide because nitric oxide is a gas. So um, I don't know if it is an amino acid. Perhaps it is. I mean, you got me on that one if it is. But nitric oxide is a gas, and you can't take a gas as a supplement. So you take the precursors to the gas, which is, in our case, citrulline for the nitric oxide supplement. Uh, nitrates, also nitrates convert into nitrites, and nitrites convert into nitric oxide. Citrulline converts into nitric oxide and then converts into the gas, which then opens up the blood vessels. So. What's the best thing for chronic constipation? Uh, Dr. Joe's intestinal formula works really well. Uh, it's on the website, drjoe.com. But here's the thing. Um, it's the only supplement I don't want you to take forever. We want to find out why you have constipation. Many times it's a pinched nerve in the low back that goes to the colon. We need to unpinch that nerve. Sometimes the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm. We need to adjust or pull the stomach away from the diaphragm to relax the colon. Sometimes it's a valve between your small and large intestine called the ileocecal valve, and it's stuck closed. We need to massage it to open it up. So short-term, Dr. Joe's intestinal formula. Long-term, come see us, and let's find out why. Uh, the amino acid question was based on your comment about um, eating for amino acids not being good according to a study. Okay, branch chain amino acids. Okay, branch chain amino acids. Yeah, that's different. So, but nitric oxide is a gas. So, okay. branch chain meaning like complex. Yeah, complex. It, it, it the amino acid then has branches of it of, of different uh, molecules on it to make what's called a branch chain amino acid. So, and so that's where the problem comes in. What is the best treatment for osteoporosis? Uh, cutting out animal proteins. Uh, animal proteins are acidic. 
And when you eat acid foods, the body sucks calcium out of the bones to neutralize the acids. So if you go to my website, drjoe.com, and type in bone health, we did a real good show on that. We talk about the foods that are acidic, the foods that are alkaline, and how to drive the calcium back into the bones and, and prevent it from coming out of the bones to neutralize the acid. And then it could be hormones involved, could be exercise involved, but from a nutritional standpoint, taking calcium is very, very little use. Because bone is made up of a lot more than just calcium. You need calcium, boron, silica, vitamin D, vitamin D3 with K2 to drive the calcium into the bones. Bones are complex organisms, and it's not just take calcium and build bone mass. In all the years I've been studying, I've never seen anyone with osteoporosis actually take calcium and reverse osteoporosis. It's never happened. Now, following the protocols that I recommend, I've seen it happen often. So. Um. This person's on a no-fiber diet following a small bowel surgery for adhesions. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, okay. Ah, it came back up. Mm -hmm. That's okay. We done? That's it. All right, guys. Appreciate you guys. Uh, follow us on social media at Dr. Joe Esposito, whatever form you're not on, follow us. Any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com.